Hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to yet another episode of ICPA Clinical Series. Today we have the ninth episode and in each episode of ICPA Clinical Series, we solve one clinical challenge. So the theme is each episode one clinical challenge. And today I take great pleasure in inviting my friend, Dr. Sandeep Singh, who is the director of Sahaj Dental Care and Academy, Prayagraj. Dr. Sandeep Singh completed his BDS from Amravati and then did his MS in implants from UCLA, California. Now he is a certified trainer for advanced hard and soft tissue regeneration techniques from Urban Regeneration Institute, Budapest. He is also a certified trainer for advanced hard and soft tissue regeneration techniques from Department of Dental Studies, University of Bern, Switzerland. Sandeep also runs popular groups on Facebook and WhatsApp. All of them are known as Sahaj Dental Groups on which he keeps on sharing his clinical cases beautifully documented and we have all been learning from his clinical cases for many years. So it's a great privilege to have him on our show and today he'll be talking on a topic which is his favorite autogenous dentine graft in implant practice. We all encounter cases requiring teeth extraction before we do oral rehabilitation with dental implants. And since we are removing the teeth, it is very practical to utilize these extracted teeth, which otherwise will be usually discarded and convert them into autogenous grafting material. And we know that research has shown through multiple studies that autogenous dentine graft can become a successful technique for bone regeneration with mineralized and demineralized dentin, ma dentin matrix particles. So today, Sandeep Singh will describe the science behind autogenous dentin, dentin grafts in implant practice. And he will also show his cases and the technique that he uses in his clinical practice. So can we have Sandeep on the camera? Hi, Sandeep. Yeah, hi, Raji. Uh, good evening, Jain. Uh, to all my all the viewers there who have registered for this uh, webinar and I thank uh, team ICPA uh, health products and um, especially uh, my dear friend and brother uh, Dr. Rajiv Chudgupi for inviting me for uh, uh, this uh, showing my clinical cases on dentinal graft and I'm really uh, honored and uh, obliged. So, uh, can I start? So, uh, as we see uh, normally, um, um, most of the clinicians, um, they observe quite a, uh, after extraction, if the tooth is not replaced, or uh, by an implant, or if that site is not grafted, um, dimensional changes into the alveolar ridge, which is uh, which leads to even if you have to uh, put a bridge, or if not implant, um, loss of alveolar ridge in uh, the bone can lead to um, food lodgement and lot many difficulties later. So uh, this is a great problem and um, uh, which most of the clinicians, they face into their day-to-day -day practice. Uh, and if, if you have uh, something which is autologous by the patient and you're giving it back to the patient, uh, nothing like that because normally we tend to throw the tooth into the dustbin. So if a, the tooth can be used as a grafting material, it's such a big boon because it is autologous in nature and it is readily accepted by the body of the patient. So uh, today I'm going to talk about use of dentinal graft uh, into implant dentistry especially, but then there are other advantages also other fields where you can use the dentinal graft. 
before we talk about the entire graph, we should have a simple understanding that what kind of graph materials which are available. Um, and if we see that we have the golden standard bone autograft, which is uh, many many people can use it, but then the bone autograft is uh, one disadvantage that it high morbidity. Uh, if you have to go into the iliac crest, if you have to take it, the uh, autograph, you have to go to the various sites. And uh, it should, mostly it happens like, it is not the operating site which you have to. So you have to go for the second operating site and that increases the morbidity of the patient. So, and if it is particulated, it resorbs pretty fast. And then you have to have the cortical area also. So you have to um, go for a cortical plates, harvest the cortical plates, and then only it gives you a good bone. So uh, another one is auto tooth graft, which is again autologous in nature, but then morbidity is not there because if the tooth is mobile and you have to take it out, uh, normally people throw it into the dustbin. But here, we can utilize that tooth to make a graft, which is much, much cheaper also than anything else. And then comes the bone allograft, which is uh, from the same species, but uh, genetically different. And it is very costly. And uh, you have to be sure about uh, the bone bank and whether it is cortical or it is cancellous or it is cortico cancellous. So there are a lot of ifs and buts into that. And another biggest problem is that if you are using a FDB, allograft, freeze dried bone graft, uh, there are always chances of disease transfer and uh, that's a great risk. But uh, so ultimately you have to use uh, the DFDB demineralized freeze-dried bone, which again becomes like a filler because it's, it, uh, it loses the property of conductivity. So it's not osseoconductive, it is uh, inductive, it is conductive. So again, it becomes dead and it like, acts like a filler. Um, and then comes your uh, bone xenograph, which is again it's from the altogether different species, mostly bovine, porcine, or equine also. And then uh, xenograft is also osseoconductive, it's not inductive, and um, it can lead to host um, um, there can be any kind of uh, host reaction also because of the xenograft. And then comes the alloplast. It's a plastic material and there are many, but I really don't like in my practice the alloplast because they are fast resolving. And uh, um, alloplast, uh, if you add on HA, hydroxyapatite, with uh, beta TCP or um, uh, just like norbone, you have uh, uh, perioglass, they resolve very fast. And uh, if you add on HA with that, sometimes they remain like a sequester. So these are the basically available uh, craft material and out of which I'll be showing you the comparison that how auto tooth graft is much, much superior than these other graft materials. And when you are doing GBR, you should have an understanding of uh, membranes also. So the membranes available and which are being used is collagen membrane, which is a resorbable collagen membrane. And uh, um, most popular brand in India is of uh, Guy Schlake and then uh, Noble Biker comes with a membrane. Uh, then uh, uh, there is one more membrane by um, uh, this 
biohorizons. So these membranes are quite useful in sausage technique and um, they're good barrier membranes. Then the allogenic membranes and then they are dense PTFE membrane. These are being used when the closure is not very easy. So even it can be left open into the oral environment. And then you have to be sure about the GTR procedure so that the coverage of gum soft tissue is there slowly later. So that way, um, many a times dense PTFE membrane and the most popular brand is cytoplast. And uh, then titanium mesh are being used into this. So I, I just gave you uh, salient features into this that what are, what are uh, the materials, biomaterials which are used in guided bone regeneration. <clears throat> now I'm coming directly to the comparison. That how a tooth is comparable to the bone, human bone. So if you see the component is, it contains hydroxyapatite, HA, it contains collagen type one, it contains water and BMPs and growth factors. So if you see it by percentage wise, HA in tooth is 70%, collagen type one is 25% and uh, water is 5%. Uh, BMPs are more than bone. Um, and in bone, if you see this HA is 60%, type one collagen is 30% and water is 10%. So almost very similar to the bone. So that makes a very good uh, um, acceptance into the human body because it is autologous, genetically same, species wise same, and uh, even the component wise. And BMPs are more than the bone. So that's a, that makes a big difference. And if you see the quality of enamel, if you see this enamel dentine cementum, and many people have this question about pulp also, that what, how does the pulp helps in that? Do you take it out or not? And uh, periodontal ligaments. So if you see comparison of uh, enamel, you can in, uh, compare enamel as a super xenograft because it resists resorption. Dentine, it can be super cortical. Uh, and uh, cementum, it can act as a cancellous. It was similar to the cancellous bone. So all three good qualities, which you need into a graft material, uh, it is there into uh, dentine graft. And um, now we talk about pulp and uh, periodontal ligaments. They are eliminated during the, the chemical uh, procedure which we do, the protocol we follow for the cleansing and uh, buffering and partial demineralization. Uh, we start like those teeth which are uh, periodontally compromised and they are mobile and you cannot save them you take it out. So first and foremost thing uh, which I would like to clear is uh, your dentinal graft you can get only when you have discarded tooth in hand. If you do not have that, then you have to use other biomaterials. So it's only possible when you have a tooth. You cannot do that. You, you can make a sound good to take it out and you create a graft. It has to be a discarded, the, the, the tooth which is being going to be discarded. So you have to use that. And many people ask question that, uh, would you like to use a endodontically treated tooth? Earlier people used to talk about because it has, um, um, they, they never used to prefer uh, an endodontically treated tooth because they used to think that it has gutta into it and then it has sealers, which are going into the lentinal tubules. Uh, but now you, you have to take out, uh, you have to remove the uh, gutta parcha from that tooth and then you can utilize that one also. And rest of the sealers and everything are eliminated during the um, processing. And this is, this is what we get. 
a particulated graft after the procedure. So this is uh, extracted teeth. This is the cycle. You have to clean the teeth. The carious portion, normally I remove it and then the PDL around the tooth, I clean it with the diamond burr or carbide burr. And then I have this Cometa Bio machine where I grind and sort it. Then the chemical procedure. Earlier it was two steps, now it has three steps but only for a few minutes, and you get a wonderful autogenous graft material. Uh, this is the protocol. You clean the debris, you dry the tooth, you place it into the chamber, and, and let me tell you that this grinder, the chamber is for one-time use. I mean to say it is for one single patient. You cannot use it for somebody else. Uh, it is not autoclavable, so it comes from the company as a um, treated one, sterilized. So you open it front of the patient, open it up, and then place the tooth. And if it is uh, last molars or um, multi-rooted tooth, you can section it up because tooth as a whole sometimes gets stuck into the grinders. So it is always good to have a section it and you can train your assistant to prepare all these things. So you take it out, give it to him or her and he, him or her, they can do all these things and you get the readily made. So you extract the graft, you apply dentine cleanser and then you apply the uh, partial demineralization with ADTA and then uh, buffering solution, wash, and uh, graft is in-house made, ready to graft into the patient's mouth. And it takes just few minutes. You can get a graft in 10, 15 minutes, it's ready to be used. Now, if uh, we come to evaluating the biologics, so biocompatibility, bioactivity, osseoconductivity, and osseoinductivity. So it, if you see, does it met, uh, this the material trigger osteoclast? Is the material isolated? Is the material rejected? How much inflammation do we see? How much pain? So it is highly biocompatible. Bioactivity, if you going to see, you, you have a question that does the material work with the natural healing process? against it or not affecting it? Is there communication between the material and the site cellular matrix or is it just a filler? So it, it uh, fulfill all the criteria of bioactivity. Um, you thought, if you ask about osseoconductivity, so the question comes in, does the material provide a structural scaffold for tissue to form around? Does the material support vascularization? Does the material support tissue maturity over time or resorbs too early? So it fulfills, again, all the criteria. And the most important thing is osseoinductive. Does the material induce biological process that trigger bone generation? Yes. Does the material contain BNPs and growth factor? Yes. And does the material attract progenerator cells and macrophage activation? Yes. So it fulfills all the criteria of biocompatibility, bioactivity, osseoconductivity, osseoinductivity, and that makes it a um, wonderful bone graft material. If we evaluate other graft materials, so see, xenograft, it is biocompatible, but it's not bioactive, it is just like a filler. Osseoconductivity is there, but it's not osseoinductive. Alloplast may plus minus, may not, may be. It's not bioactive. It's conductive, but not inductive. Allograft, it's biocompatible. Bioactivity, no, it's just a filler. Osseoconductive, yes, plus minus. Osseoinductivity, no. Autologous bone, it's biocompatible. It's bioactive, not conductive, but it's bioinductive. 
But if you see autologous dentinal graft, it has all the three, four things plus. I mean, it is back compatible, bioactive, also conductive, also inductive. Then if you see PRF, PRF is bicompatible, biocompatible, bioactive. It's not conductive, it's inductive. PMPs also uh, growth factors and BMPs. Um, they are so it is very clear that autologous dentine gives you the perfect material which you can imagine for GBR. Turnover, if you see xenograft, turnover is like very little. Um, conversion is there. I, I do a lot of xenograft also, into I use into my practice. Um, especially um, a good company, xenograft makes it much, much better. And it has given me good results. Um, turnover, if you see alloplast, whether it is too fast or it remains like a sequester, never. Allograph, it's fast resolving. If you see dentinograph, it is very slow resorption, so it gives you the scaffold. Now the question comes, is it a bone? Xenograph, no. Allograph, no. Uh, alloplast, no. Allograph, yeah, it's a bone. Dentinograph, definitely, it's a bone. It's very similar to the bone. How soon can we re-enter? Xenograph, not before six months. Ideally, nine months, you can re-enter. Alloplast, it varies because it resolves fast also, sometimes. Allographs, six months or little earlier. Denting graft, you can enter within four months. Two to three months, they have given this data, but uh, I prefer four months, five months, in between four to six months. So early entry is possible. Inflammation, if you see, xenograft, it can create some inflammation because it's a foreign body. Alloplast, definitely some. Allograft, alloplast, definitely. But if you talk about autodentinograft, it's negligible. Very little or negligible. Secondary resorption, it happens in xenografts, little. Alloplast, it happens definitely. Allograft, alloplast, both. But dentinograft, it is very, very little or negligible. Invagination, if you see, it happens with xenograft, it happens with um, alloplast, allograft. But with dentinograft, no. Amount of bone formation conversion, which you say, is little in xeno. Alloplast, it may, it may not, because it, if it resolves fast, uh, you don't get time because scaffold is not there and you don't get the time to get the new bone formation done. So normally you end up seeing nothing. Allograph, yeah, it happens. It converts because it's fast resolving. Uh, Dentinograph, definitely new bone formation, a lot. So short-term versus long-term grafting cases, if you see. <coughs> um, short-term, uh, you get to these period diseases, implantitis, perimplantitis, bone loss. Um, so um, we have to see a long-term effect into the grafting cases where you get able to achieve healing to the point where the site is able to naturally or autonomously maintain itself, replacement resorption. So dentinal graft fulfills all these criteria. Um, the additional advantages of autologous dentinal graft is no secondary surgical site, as I said earlier. Um, and during osseointegration and during the newborn formation, what happens the dentine gets ankylosed with the newborn, surrounded by dentine graft particle uh, uh, gets ankylosed with the newborn. So, which is one of the very important factors. 
It is highly predictable for short and long term. And it is cheaper than the most of the graphs available in the market. Highly regarded by patients because patients, uh, if you go through the, the religious aspect of the patient, a uh, patient who is a Muslim um, will never accept a uh, xenograph, which is of porcine origin. Uh, Hindus, as per the Indian uh, um, uh, scenario, I'm talking, if you talk about uh, cow bone, they say no, no, for the Hindus. And if you talk about the Jain, Jainism, those who follow Jainism, they will never prefer allographs from any origin or autographs or allographs also, xenographs also. So they readily accept this graph material. Uh, it can be saved for later use or subsequent use. So that's another good property. You can save it. If you, if you, if you take out somebody's tooth and then you ask them uh, to, that you can use it later, uh, you can preserve it and then uh, by autoclaving, you can use the uh, tooth as a dental graft. Quick stability, no need for membrane in many socket graftings. Handles, handling is beautiful and turnover is slow. So 1.5 to 3 years. So these are the additional properties. And uh, if you go on to one page summary of dental graft, uh, dentine undergoes ankylosis, contains a lot of growth factors and BMPs. It's bioactive, it's tough, HA, so leads to slow resorption and it is autologous. And how it helps us is that high stability uh, during the first and second phase of healing. It generates newborn, accelerated regeneration of newborn, long-term scaffold due to HA. Uh, so it supports bone remodeling and it's predictable and uh, less risk into this. And what we see is fast healing, no membrane needed in most of the cases, and unless you are doing a horizontal or vertical augmentation, a large defect, you have to contain the graft material. So the membrane is required. Uh, fast bone regeneration, faster time to implant, fast hard and soft tissue healing, no loss into the uh, dimensions of the site, horizontal or vertical, uh, lamellar bone conversion, less pain, better patient acceptance and low inflammation. So overall, you can, if you see the scenario, it is wonderful. Win-win situation for the doctor and for the patient. Protocols is like mineralized dentine graft. Standard protocol is seven to eight minutes for from extraction to grafting. Partial demineralized dentine uh, it accelerates um, bone, so nine to ten minutes from extraction to grafting. Sticky bone you can make sticky bone from this dentinal sticky bone matrix with adding up APRF, LPRF, or IPRF. Uh, whole tooth can be stored for future use. Excess dentine graft is also, uh, we have been able to store, but you have to autoclave. These are certain uh, uh, fences. There's a lot of work has been done and especially Yistak Binderman uh, from Israel, Professor Yistak Binderman, he has done this and he has devised this machine um, and uh, um, Kim has in 2013 has used this and there's one more um, a company in South Korea which uses this top craft. Uh, it's little costly, much, much costly than this Cometa Bio, but um, uh, it takes a little more time and then uh, you can use a demineralized uh, tooth and you can you can use the whole tooth as a um, block graft also with that machine. So these are certain references and now I'm coming to my cases quickly because we have little time left. 
So this was my first case and here you can see uh, the root stump and, um, and they were taken out and they were endodontically treated. So I tried to remove the gutta parcha also, but uh, you will see later that there were little remnants of gutta parcha were there and I will not advise, but still, um, if there is no tooth and all, all you are taking out is endodontically treated, you have to give a little more time, five, 10 minutes more, uh, to ask your assistant to remove the gutta parcha with a long burr, tapered burr, but you have to clean the tooth, you have to dry it and place it into this machine, which is a smart dentine grinder by Cometa Bio. This is the chamber on the grinder and look at the blades. They have blunt end. So many people ask me this question that uh, can we use a coffee grinder? No. Coffee grinder blades are has a sharp edge and that can generate a lot of heat. But here it is hitting the these blades, they hit the tooth and, and, and then it breaks into smaller pieces. So because of that hitting action, uh, heat generation is not there. And this is uh, like you can program it for uh, three seconds grinding and then 10 seconds sorting and then you can start and stop the motor. So there is no overdoing uh, and no overheating. Uh, it works automatically. And this is what you get. But if you see, this was my first time, you can see small uh, particles of gutta parcha here. Um, I'll not advise for that, but still I took it out and I used this material. And initially the protocol was a two-step protocol. So 10 minutes dentin cleanser, which is sodium hydroxide plus 20% ethanol. And it cleans all the pulp and PDL and everything is clean through this. And then uh, the initial protocol, two steps. So this was the buffering solution. It has to be three minutes, twice. Twice you have to use it so that the pH is neutralized. And then in this case, I use auto and allograft also. And I did the layering. So you can see the buckle aspect of this uh, extracted side. It was all gone with a lot of infection. Bone loss was there. I placed the implants uh, onto the prosthetic level. And then these were the exposed areas. So I used uh, uh, autogenous bone on top of it. And, and uh, with the allograft also, again, the second layer. And third layer was, uh, and then I used this bioguide membrane onto the lingual aspect. And I used this uh, dentine graft into a sticky format on the top, the topmost layer. And then uh, I tried to put the bone tack material to create the sausage, but this is not uh, right because you can see here the folds on the membrane. And uh, since the material uh, was little short, um, what I needed was last, uh, before placing the last bone tag, you have to push it and create a sausage like smooth surface, which I can show you into the another case of mine. And um, so this was the first time, so, um, but still the results were good. And the closure, I use uh, cytoplast 4030 or sometimes 50 also. Uh, these are the um, um, uh, monofilament and uh, very patient friendly. It doesn't hurt and the ends, they do not hurt. On, in India, if you are not getting the cytoplast, then I will prefer asking you to use a monofilament uh, nylon sutures, but then you have to leave these ends a little longer because they can lacerate the tongue and the soft tissue a lot and they hurt a lot, uh, the patients have this complaint. So um, what I have learned from Professor Istuman Arman that if you are doing a larger area involving in GVR, your first suture should be in the middle and it should be a, a horizontal mattress suture. So this was the first one. So once you do that, 
the soft tissue gets evolved and you can see it goes up and you can see this keratinized tissue here um, together and then you can give the interrupting sutures or one or two more uh, matter sutures. So uh, stress-free closure and uh, you can see here the amount of newborn on the site, um, the crafted material and this was the uh, CBCT after a close shave here to the mental foramina but um, aggressive implants into this region and it's working wonderfully into the patient's mouth. Uh, now I come to my second case quickly uh, because uh, I think we have five minutes. So I'll finish it up quickly. And this is one case with the multiple uh, um, atreated tooth. So I had to take out and full mouth case. So extracted the tooth and I did the socket preservation. These two carious one root stumps were discarded. And this one I used. And you can see after cleaning and drying into the grinder, and this is what I got. Protocol is same with one more step here. Cleanser. And then 10% EDTA for partial demineralization. Because it exposes the BMPs and it works really good in a new bone formation. It helps a lot on uh, osteogenesis. And then step three is buffering. So within 10 minutes, you get the material uh, which is quite good and overall price if you see what you um, are expecting is four to five thousand rupees which you are spending on this and uh, any other graph material is not so cheap any other like if you talk about allograph it's highly very costly 2cc or um, material. And if you go for xenograph, also it is very costly. Um, so this becomes very economical. And uh, many times when you are doing socket grafting, because of the no wall defects, and there is no defect around in the bony and mammon, uh, there is no need to place membrane. You can just suture it back. So here also cytoplasm uh, sutures and PTFE sutures. And uh, I'm very fond of them and they are very um, patient friendly and very less um, plaque formation on top of it. So no membrane, just, and you can see here, this OPG after doing the socket grafting, can you see this beautiful, um, uh, it will develop into a remodeling will happen and it will develop into a good bone. So within three to four um, months, I entered into it and um, these four implants were to support the denture and rest of the implants were placed and then patient got a um, multi-units apartment, uh, got a prosthesis, hybrid prosthesis on top of it, up and lower. Now we come to the interesting part is histomorphological study of my own cases. Here you can see the dentine particles being embedded into the mineralized tissue very nicely. And, and, and as said earlier, they get ankylosed, so they provide a good scaffold and um, a good bone around it. Uh, this is cementum particles, which we see quite a large in number. Uh, since we entered into three to four months, so this was the uh, scenario uh, I, when I took the bone sample for histomorphological sections. And this is my best case, which I feel that everybody should see. Uh, Pre-operative CVCT, you can see the bone loss and the patient was not happy and these teeth were unable, I was unable to save them. So I suggested an extraction and doing the GBR. This, this was the teeth, clean, placed into the chamber, like this, right? And I used PRF also, uh, growth factors. 
and did the sausage. And here you can see, uh, look at the membrane. There are no folds and it is just like a sausage. Uh, it's like a mini sausage here. Um, uh, this is a technique by Professor Stuan Alman and it is a predictable technique for building up horizontal and vertical bone. Uh, look at the healing, post-operative. And uh, then you can see the CVCT, the amount of bone created. Look at here. And here you can see the bone tax. And uh, uh, look at the vertical and horizontal bone onto the sections. It's beautiful uh, with very little bone to good bone. And when I re-entered, this is the classical case, the amount of vertical and horizontal bone. Uh, this is the ideal which you need and wonderful, beautiful. Uh, sometimes you admire your own work. So this case, I really love this one. Uh, the re-entry, uh, let me tell you, I re-entered into this person mouth after nine months. So I took a little more time with this patient. This patient had come from, uh, it's a Libyan patient. So I took out this trephinated, this bone for my histomorphological study. And I placed two implants, single stage. And then I added xenograft on top of it just for any discrepancies over there. So that can be taken care of. And as xeno on top, it will remain like that and it will maintain the scaffold. And um, that is why I added xeno on top and uh, did the closure with the membrane. And this is the healing. And uh, you can see here, wonderful results. An interesting part, you can see uh, when I got my histomorphological sections through my friend uh, who is a oral pathologist here, Dr. Devend Alrani, who is a great asset to me. Um, a wonderful section with osteoblast and concentric rings around, but no dentinal graft, dentinal um, particle was seen. It was fully resolved, it seems. Uh, I can assume it, but uh, presence of cemented particles was quite fascinating because it could be a reparative cementum. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure, and my oral pathologist is also not sure, but it was um, quite interesting that no dentine graft material was there after nine months. It was fully resolved, but cementum particle was there. So this is one, you can see the concentric lamellae and a good uh, newborn formation. This is another case, quickly. This patient came from Bahrain and uh, especially to get the dental implant treatment done and I used, may have combined um, Geno uh, dentinal um, by layering techniques and here the top layer of Xeno and then sausage. And this uh, technique I have learned from Professor Damien Boozer that uh, I use a larger 30 by 40 membrane and I take a strip, cut it uh, uh, longitudinally and uh, keep it aside. And then when I finish my GBR procedure, then on top, if you can see, I place the another horizontally, the layer of uh, membrane on top additional uh, by making it two layers so that you slow down the resorption of the membrane and give more time to uh, the bone uh, to be, you know, uh, uh, grafted material to mature. So uh, it delays the resorption of the membrane uh, and um, it, it's helpful. And the closure, and uh, I use these adhesive tapes for a better healing along with uh, human cyanoacrylate. Uh, it gives a wonderful result. 
So, and I add blue and gel also sometimes into this. So for accelerated healing and adjunct to the healing. So uh, this is the last one. Uh, no, uh, this is an outstation case. I just wanted to show you that these were the tooth. We prepared the graft and we did a bilateral sinus and all on six kind of case. So you can see the bilateral sinus lift, direct sinus lift with dentinal graft into that and lower one also. It was done outstation in some other clinic, one of my friend, Dr. Chachwish. And um, this is the last case. No, no, not that. Um, I'll finish it quickly. Uh, this is one full good uh, extraction in the upper jaw, uh, maxilla, and then um, osseodensification. You can see here the osseodensification done with densa burrs and then losing very little bone and the placement of implant, good size implant into this. And then the dead space, the socket area was grafted with, after placing the cover screw, was grafted with dentinal graft and then a single stage with, because of the good initial stability, single stage, it was done single stage with the gingiva healer placement with a NOVA tape for GTR, it helps in GTR. The collagen fleece uh, on a poncho kind of, poncho kind on with uh, the gingiva healer placed back. Uh, so this is one way you can use this. And uh, other than that, last molar extraction when you do, uh, when you're doing implant, you can use that impacted tooth as a dentine graft to that area. But if you're just doing impaction, uh, it is always, I always tell my patient that look, healing with a dead space will take a lot, lot of time. But if I, uh, the tooth which I have taken out, I'll throw it into the dustbin. If I use it as a dentine graft and pack it again uh, into the socket, the healing will be faster. And another good thing about this is uh, when we pack it with the dentinal graft and close it, healing definitely becomes faster. But uh, another thing which a patient experiences is a lot of sensitivity to number seven uh, because of uh, very thin bone in between seven and eight. Uh, the cementum is exposed and a patient come back to you with a sensitivity. But if you pack it with dentinal graft, it, uh, the socket will heal faster and patient never comes back with to you with the uh, problem or complaint of sensitivity. So it is otherwise also good. And this is the raw material. This is the production unit in your own clinic and you get the in-house preparation of your graft material with Cometa Bio. Uh, I have this uh, um, video, but I'm not going to show you because it will take a lot of time. Uh, and uh, I use a lot of PRF into my practice and uh, using the Professor Shukrun's protocol, this 1300 RPM with eight minutes, it gives me APRF and 700 RPM with three minutes gives me IPRF. Uh, this is a machine which I have, which, you, which I use to, which I make for which, from which I make PRF. And I have another machine from US. It's a super cool machine because uh, it is available in India also. And uh, uh, the dealer who deals with Cometa Bio, they give you in combination. And in combination, it is wonderful. So uh, for any centrifuge, uh, the, the vibrations and the, the center of gravity and Everything is very important and this machine fulfills that. So I have both the machines in my practice and I'm very happy with that. Uh, thank you for your patience, listening. Um, my um, talk about the entire graph. Thank you, Rajiv. And uh, this is my, I am uh, my place. And this is a bridge and Sangam area. 
holy confluence of three holy rivers, uh, Ganga, Jamuna, and Saraswati in Prayagraj. And this is my email address and my uh, phone numbers. Any, anybody is welcome to, um, you know, want to ask me any questions or any suggestions, I'm there always. I do respond. Um, sometimes a delay of a day, maybe, maximum or day or two, but I definitely respond. Right. Thank you, Rajiv, and thank you, team ICPA. Thank you, Sandeep. It was a wonderful pleasure. And uh, you have covered almost everything related to autogenous dentine graph. And yeah. uh, this is so practical because we know that allografts are so difficult to get in India. We have Tata Hospital. Yeah. Where you, have to, you have to go to yeah. Tata Hospital. You have to make a case paper and all that. Earlier it was very simple. Now it has become so complicated. And uh, other allografts are not available in India. You cannot just buy them. Quickly go out and buy. No, uh, allograft. I um, I would like to give you the information. Um, anybody who is using the graft material in India, they should be sure about uh, the graft materials which are available. It should be registered with the government because you are using something into the inside the mouth of the patient. And if something goes wrong and you are into the medical legal issue, which is happening a lot these days, uh, you have to give an explanation that where from you got this material. So if it is coming from a registered company, which is registered by the government of India, it is always good. So if you see, um, uh, if you ask about allograft, you have to go to Tata Memorial. Mostly these are irradiated bone. I don't like it. I get shivers because uh, there is no guarantee of uh, disease transfer, what type of human being was that? The dead body, you have, you are not sure about it. It resolves very fast. Another company which is giving you allograft, registered allograft is strong by the company Bottis. So Bottis and Stroman is registered here. You can get it, but it is very costly. It comes by the name Maxcraft. Maxcraft. Max yeah. And uh, Xenograft, there are many, many companies, but I prefer, personally, if you ask me, I prefer uh, Guy Schlick. It is wonder, wonderful. And many times, because when there is no tooth, I'm using a lot of Xenograft for GBR, but if I get a single tooth, I prefer grinding it and mixing it with uh, Xenograft. Uh, sprinkling, sprinkling little life into it. Oh, so dentine oh, graft is like incorporating life into a dead material because all of these are uh, fillers. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. I know that you have been a big fan of sticky bone. Yeah, sticky bone because um, uh, I first, first time I learned it from my master, Professor Dong Siok Song. And then I met uh, Professor Shukru. So I use both the protocols, Shukru's protocols and Sako's protocol, which Professor Son follows. So um, sticky bone and stecky bone, whatever you call. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll take some of the questions. Sure. Uh, so the first question is whether we can use dentine matrix for which augmentation cases? Definitely, I showed you one more one of my case, which was yes. which I pers personally love it. Yeah, it's great. Beautiful great. bone around. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can use it for vertical, horizontal, but let me tell you, mostly you don't get that much amount uh, because if the if there is no tooth, then it is very difficult. But if you have tooth and it is less, I will always ask you or tell you and uh, suggest you to use other graft materials mixed with that because the okay. volume is very important. Yeah, volume is very important. And also make, make sure that you are using perfect technique. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, next question is the prescribed protocol of 10 seconds for sorting and four for sorting. I don't know what is is leaving the inside of the jar corroded in some cases. The tooth is sectioned into small pieces before grinding. What is the cause and remedy for the same? Corroded? No. When you are when you are using one time uh, grinder, there is no chance of corrosion into it. So I don't think because if you are using the same jar for so many patients, it's wrong. It's very wrong, ethically wrong, very very wrong. I what I do, I use the jar on the grinder, and I then after using it, I get it. Ask my assistant to clean it up with a uh, with a cold uh, sterilization, and then pack it and put the name of the patient and date and everything, and I give it back to the patient. Okay. The next time, if you uh, get a chance that you are going for some uh, GBI procedure, you bring it. If I have to take out the tooth, I will utilize this for you only, not anybody else. So if you give it back to the patient, patients, um, um, psychologically, patient is very satisfied that it is not going into the wrong hands. Yeah. Great. Great. How much time will you give if the system is present and now the extraction is done? How much time I give for the for a socket to heal if there was a cyst present and now you mm -hmm. have removed? Um, see, if there is a cyst present and uh, present and I have taken out enucleated curettage and everything proper uh, decontamination of that site is done, I prefer grafting it then and there and then leave it. Or it depends upon the defect. If it is uh, uh, like this, surrounded by the bony wall all around and just the buccal side is gone with the excavation, no need sometimes to put even graft. You just close it back and it heals on its own. So uh, timing, if you ask, I'll prefer going back into that to place an implant after six months, not before that. Okay. Six, uh, eight, nine and, and let me tell you one more thing, one big, big point. Patients are crazy about um, saying that you do it faster. When you do the GBR, they'll keep on pressurizing you. Now place the implant, now give me the teeth. Tell them, I tell them that look, if you want to have a baby, do you, would you like to have a premature baby? No. So how much time a baby needs to be formed fully and delivered nine months. So this bone which I am trying to give you or generate inside you is also like a baby. It will take nine months. Do not pressurize me before nine months. So normally then patient understand because I tell them that if you have a premature baby, that baby will always be ill, weak. Would you like to have your bone like that? So they understand. You have to convince your patient. You have to. It's not easy to do GBR, large defects uh, into India. And many times people ask me how you do it in Alaba. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do a lot of patients in Alaba and other cities also. People do call me out for GBR cases. And I, I do go. Okay, and there is a question on the cost of the dentine grinder. How many varieties are there and what are the different price ranges they are available for? See, there is one um, uh, machine from Korea. Uh, it is top graft and um, uh, I remember when I organized uh, uh, WAPS in New Delhi. At that time, they came in, and at that time in 2017, the price was around 12 to 13 lakhs. Okay. And uh, it gives you a block also, and it takes a lot of time, and the price is very high, so it's not for everybody. And now, the second machine which I got exposed to is Cometa Bio. 
and it is an American FDA approved company. Um, Amit Bindaman is the owner of that. And in India, it is available by Sark Healthcare from New Delhi, Mr. Sunil Sharma. He deals with that and it's very economical. I feel one time uh, asset to be added into your clinic, 1,35,000 maximum. And with okay. that, okay. They, they give you uh, five, six uh, grinders, one time use and the uh, um, solution, which has to be used like uh, a cleanser, uh, partial demineralization, small bottles, uh, red, blue, and green, and uh, it's worth. And it ends up per patient, not ma more than four to 5,000 rupees. Okay, great. Uh, great. Yeah. So the next question is, when do you use partial demineralized dentin and when do you use mineralized dentin? Um, when I'm using that, uh, when I'm um, uh, um, uh, doing the uh, preservation, bone preservation or socket preservation or regen regeneration, I'm doing for implants. I prefer it partially demineralized because it's a uh, better bone formation, faster bone formation because of the BMPs are exposed. And when I'm doing um, uh, uh, last molar extraction and grafting it, where I'm not going to place any implant or anything else, I don't do partial demon but Just two steps and I finish it. Because I, I'm not concerned about the quality of the bone which is being produced. I just want to yeah, and, uh, yeah, faster healing and uh, good healing. That is okay. what uh, is my primary objective there. Okay. okay. Can we use primary to harvest this craft? Primary means deciduous. Yeah. <laughs> Why deciduous? Because uh, at that time, uh, the child is almost uh, maximum you can get deciduous at 12 or 13 years. So uh, maybe... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Maybe the, the, the person who has asked the question uh, that uh, we can preserve those primary deciduous tools. We can use it later. Yes, yes. We, why not? Why not? We can. Mm. But the patient has to wait for that. He loses one tooth and then uh, he's, he comes back to you uh, for implant or grafting. Then you keep that tooth or give that tooth to the patient. Then patient may keep it or not. You never know. Okay. So... The next question is, what is the, in your experience, what is the predictive value of dentine grafting in comparison with your standard, you know, particulate bone grafts? Uh, particulated dentine graft is highly, highly predictable. And uh, I have used it in mixing it with xenograft. I have used it with mixing it with allograft. And it, it, uh, as I said, it, on incorporating a little life into those dead graft materials because most of them are fillers. So making them uh, more uh, biological, <laughs> inductive and biological and bioactive and osteo osteopromotion is there. So it's good. Okay. Very high, okay. high prediction. Okay. So can we add some wine or water for injection in the grinder to reduce the temperature? Uh, as I said, uh, there is no high rise temperature is not there. And you have to use a dry tooth because uh, uh, the grinder doesn't have a blade. Those blades are blunt. So they hit the tooth to break it into small pieces at a very high speed. And it is just for three seconds. So three second timer helps not to generate heat. So no need to add on any saline or anything. The tooth has to be dry. Even uh, wet tooth is not uh, advised. Okay. 
because dentine has its own moisture into it. You can see dentinal dentinal tubules have little moisture inside. So first of all, temperature is not rising. And if you add no. additional water, it may cause problems. So better use yes. the natural yes. moisture that is there in the dentine. Yeah, the yeah. Natural. It's not required at all. It's not, not required. required. Yeah. No. Can you repeat the xenograft you mentioned, which the favorite the xenograft that you use most most commonly? The the most favorite xenograft which I have I have used uh, Cerebone also from Bortis. I have used most. Uh, uh, which is, um, uh, I mean, I like, and if somebody asks me, I'll go for BIOS from Geishlik. Cerebon is available now? Cerebon is through what is, so Cerebon is available, and Cerebon has, uh, what is has been taken over or something is there in between, Bartis and uh, Stroman. So it is being marketed by Stroman. And uh, Cerebone has recently come up with a Cerebone which is in sticky format. Oh. Oh. So, so, so you just, uh, yeah, you, you take out the packet and um, you just add a little bit of saline into it and it becomes sticky. So handling becomes much, much easier with that. But with Cerebone, I don't know about the centering procedure they have, but Cerebone top surface is always uh, friable, very friable. You know, if you scrape it, you can feel the uh, 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 granules coming out. But same thing and same timing, if you use a BIOS and you try to scrape it, you won't get anything coming out. So that way I prefer BIOS. Great. Earlier, BIOS was not there. Cerebone was there in India. So I used Cerebone at that time. I have few wonderful cases with Cerebone also. Okay. Uh, basically, okay. I, I believe that if you are using the best material in the world, your technique and your protocol should be right. Uh, results are always predictable. I think if anybody wants to learn more about this technology, they should directly come to your clinic. Stay in uh, Allahabad for three, four days and watch three, four cases. No, no. Uh, yeah, Rajiv, um, you have been um, uh, you have been to my place and to my academy, and we have done a patio uh, workshop here. Uh, Komal was also there, Dr. Komal Khatri, Majumdar, um, with you. So it was a wonderful time, and um, then I had. Uh, Alberto Masili here at my academy. And then I had uh, um, Professor Patrick Palachi, whose name you introduced to me, and then I called him. <laughs> and uh, we did. Yeah, that, yeah, on, on his birthday. Uh, yeah, on his birthday. So, um, Palachi, getting Dr. Pala, Professor Palachi here was a big, big thing for me. So um, many people, uh, there, were, there, there was a dentist from uh, California who came down for a mini residency program, which, we, which I run one-to-one. -one. Not many people, just one person can come. There was a guy from Puducherry who came down all the way from Puducherry, stayed here for three, four days and learned GBR and went back. And uh, now at, uh, at my new place, I have a set of room where uh, you don't need to go anywhere, stay in a hotel. You can stay here in my academy and um, learn and go back. No problem. Great, great. But great. I always say, whatever you are attempting in your day-to-day -day practice, first, you need to learn from somebody. I'm not saying you come to me. Just like uh, for sausage technique, I went to my mentor, uh, Professor Istama. <laughs> Uh, we learned there. I went to Professor Daniel Boozer. I many times, same procedure, I keep on seeing again and again. And you always get one or two takeaway points every time. There's something. It's like you, you uh, go through Gita. Every time you get something new meaning, you know, as per the situation. So 
uh, I have very high regards for what I have done. I have traveled all around the world a lot. And um, Professor Dong Siok Son, then Professor Istaman, then uh, Sasha Jovanovich, then Daniel Gozil, then uh, Patrick Palachi, then uh, Professor Shukru, uh, yeah. Zeev Simon, Zeev Major. I like, there's endless uh, people, uh, Scott Gans, there are many people. I'm like, uh, you need to uh, learn from all of them there it is not easy it's not easy and above all i keep my friend dear friend and brother lanka mahesh you know he was the one who pushed me into implantology so uh, he was my first implant guru i can say uh, though he is a brother we were together in the aims in 97 um, but he's an amazing guy and um, i owe him uh, whatever i have learned because he's, he was the first one who pushed me into this. I, you, my first love was endodontics. Endodontistry. <laughs> so I still do endo. Uh, uh, and for endo, my uh, guru is Dr. Chandra, who is no more. And, uh, and then in Zurich, um, 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 there was uh, one, uh, I just, the name slipped out of my mind, uh, but I learned from him the advanced end of procedures. So I owe him a lot for that. Okay. Great. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank and for perio, it was you. Pardon? For perio, for perio surgeries, it was you who, uh, you know, pushed me into this. Ah, you were already there. You were already there. <laughs> no, you you are you are the one who pushed me into this. And when we started that perio program into my academy, it was uh, that made me. You know, because whenever I have those programs, I learn a lot myself. And learning is an unending process. There's no end to it till I die. So I, for my viewers. Uh, let me tell you one more thing. Uh, there is a PERIO program, a PERIO conference happening in Istanbul. And uh, Professor Zukili is going to be there with many more international uh, uh, speakers. So it's happening in March, April, 3rd and 4th April. So um, I can give it to you and you can circulate that flyer. Uh, it yes, is a one. Yes, yes, yes. So I I will uh, suggest all of you who are because it is very close. Istanbul is Turkey is close. Rather than going to uh, Europe, you can go to Istanbul, and I am planning to go there. And they are giving a good group discount also. So it's I think two hundred and twenty euros or two hundred and forty euros. Which is pretty good amount, affordable. Okay. Okay. So those who want to learn soft tissue. Okay. okay. So in I think we have covered pretty comprehensively that the rotogers, dentin graft. You have covered all the facets, how the techniques you use, the state of the yeah. art thing, the science behind it, and I really like that you have uh, taken time and interest to get histomorphometric studies, and you showed the results. And I'm um, uh, really yeah, glad. I, 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 I normally take histomorphological sections. I mean, like I take out the tissue, bone tissues, just to see that whether I have got the conversion, I have got the bone or not. And I have a great asset with me, my uh, colleague here, uh, doctor, um, who is an oral pathologist. So he makes wonderful slides. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you for this wonderful session. Thank you viewers for being a part of ninth episode of ICP clinical series. And soon we'll be coming up with uh, the 10th episode. And uh, here I would like to take this opportunity to tell you that in the first week of March, we have the Endurantics Day, Indo uh, Day. And soon after that, we have Women's Day. So we are planning to combine both of them. 
and we are planning to have a series of women speakers. The entire March will be of the women dentistry. So we may we are planning to have three different sessions and all women speakers. Soon we'll be coming up with the details and we'll be announcing that and we'll be you know getting all the information on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and our WhatsApp communication. So thank you for being here for the ninth episode. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you once again. Good night. Good night oh. to all of you. Namaskar and Jai Hind. Good night.